trying to make one of those little babies, but you are over the age of 40. We've been talking about what options might exist for you. And, you know, we do get so many tweets and so many Facebook posts when it comes to fertility, uh, which is why I don't think we'll ever exhaust this topic. So when it comes to egg donation, I think one thing that has to be made clear is you can't pay for no. eggs. No. It's like any other organ. Yeah, you no can't money pay for can a kidney, you can't pay for liver, you can't pay for eggs, you can't pay for a uterus. So in Canada, again, this Assisted Human Reproduction Act stipulates that you can pay for receivable expenses related to the cycle directly or indirectly. Okay. So, you know, time lost for work for a gestational carrier, so someone that would carry a baby for you. Time lost from work, that's as long as it's receivable, yes it is. But you can't say, you're giving me eggs, so I'm going to pay for a new car for you to get mm -hmm. to your appointments. You can't do things like that. It has to be reasonable. Um, the person who becomes the intended parent or the recipient of these donor eggs mm -hmm. needs to pay for the medications for the egg donor. And then the egg donor has to commit to a medical procedure, which is fairly involved. So the person who becomes the egg donor needs to be less than a certain age and qualify from a medical perspective. So a fertility assessment is required. So they have to see a fertility person for an initial assessment. Mm -hmm. Then they have to commit to approximately six to eight weeks there's part of it is preparation for the cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, they may be required to take the birth control pill for a little while so that the doctor can manage their cycle and time them into the recipient cycle. Okay. Because it's, it's kind of a fancy party planning <laughs> because you have to time two people's menstrual cycles together. Oh my gosh. Such that the recipient's uterus is artificially prepared to receive the embryos once at the created same time. at the same time. You can also do it frozen. You can do the egg donor first and then transfer them frozen into the recipient, which is easier for the doctor. Right. But more often than not, when I'm doing a, these, it's party planning. So I arrange yeah. one person's uterus to coincide with the embryos being ready. Okay. But then the egg donor takes the injectable medications to grow many follicles at once. Mm -hmm. And that takes about 10 to 12 days for the eggs to grow up. And then they have to have the procedure, which is a surgical procedure, and there are risks inherent in that as well. So okay. they can bleed, they can have something called ovarian hyperstimulation because they're much younger and they respond much better to the medication, so we have to be careful not to exceed our expectations with medications. Okay. Um, uh, infection, they may require antibiotics to be taken around the time of the procedure. Um, so all of those things have to be taken into consideration. And then the surgical procedure itself is under conscious sedation. So you know if someone goes, that's dislocated a shoulder and they get an intravenous so the doctor can put it back. Same kind of medication. One thing makes you calm mm -hmm. and the other thing is a painkiller. It needs to be administered intravenously. So they get an IV get put an in IV. and then there's also some local anesthetic that gets injected into the top of the vagina. Like when you go to the dentist, they put it in your mouth yeah. to freeze you before. Same idea but different hole. Okay. And uh, <laughs> just the truth. <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> under direct ultrasound guidance, the yeah. eggs are retrieved. Uh -huh. And it's kind of like being on the uh, you know, Discovery Channel a little bit because I can actually tell the individual, this is as many eggs as are coming out of you. We count the eggs. We wow. hand it off to the embryologist who looks at the follicular fluid in eggs real time. And by the time that that procedure is over, the recipients know how many eggs that they have and mm -hmm. what will technically be working to fertilize and then we have to grow them up in vitro for five days to the blastocyst stage. So once the egg donor has gone, undergone the, the procedure, mm -hmm. their job is pretty much done. Mm -hmm. So it's a commitment of about six to eight weeks and then seeing a doctor and doing all that. Right. And then once the embryos are created, the recipient, the older woman, then has a transfer which is like kind of like having a pap smear. The speculum goes into the... To the way unit. less involved. Way less involved. It's way easier to be the recipient of egg, an egg donor cycle than to have to go through that whole procedure themselves. But now let's talk about the success rate. Well, exactly. So the success rate is much greater. So remember before I said after 43, it's you know at the most 5%, most generally less than 1%. Mm -hmm. This goes up to 60 to 70% success per cycle. It's hugely different. That's a huge difference. It's a huge difference because of the age of the eggs. So the success of the cycle is very much dependent on the age of the egg donor. It's all about those eggs. It's all about the eggs. Yeah. I, I mean, nobody wants my eggs now. Mine so, neither. Right? So, yeah. and though we're not old, and this is what people tell me all the time, mm -hmm. but I'm healthy and I eat well, and look at those Hollywood actresses. They exercise. They look 10 years younger than they are. It doesn't matter what they look. It doesn't matter what you do. You, yes, it's good for you to optimize yourself for fertility. Exercise, eat well, don't smoke, don't drink alcohol, minimize caffeine, but... You can't change nature. 
we can only work with what happens in nature. We can't mm -hmm. improve upon it no matter what we do unless we use different eggs. Okay, good lesson. Let's go to break. More coming.